recording this. So, welcome, thanks for coming. Um, like I said, I always like to do a little something fun and, and out of the box before I start a meeting. I have like one long-term care and insurance kind of industry joke. It's, it's really not that great, I, I can tell that to you. Or um, one of my best friends recently bought a book on card tricks, and some of them are actually really good. So I'll give you the option. You want to see a, a really good card trick or, or hear a fair to middling joke? Card trick? Good, because I actually happen to have cards, which will make it a lot easier. So um, it doesn't matter that you can see it. You'll understand it. I'm going to pick on this, this young man over here. What's your name? Robert. 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 You're going to invade your mind, and you and I are going to get in sync. So your name's Robert, and what sign are you? What what? What sign are you? Oh, You're, I'm a Sagittarius. When's your birthday? Uh, 28th. 21st. Oh, no, so um, I'm going to ask you to cut the deck. And do you have a $20 bill in your pocket? No, I don't. That's <laughs> nothing to do with the trick. I just want to <laughs> 20 from the guy. I'm an insurance. Okay. All right. So this is called the clock trick. Cut the deck. Nothing funny. I'll even do it again. Um, first one I'm going to do is pick your <laughs> prediction card. card. I think you're going to go. You said you're a Sagittarius? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite color? Yellow. Yellow. There's no yellow cards in there. Don't worry. Do you want me to pick up a card now or no? I like that one. We're going to go with that one. Okay. I'm writing down the card I think he's going to pick. Now, Robert, <coughs> what I want you to do from the top of the deck. Whatever your favorite time of day is, 6 o'clock, take six cards off the top. Whatever your favorite time of day is, take that many cards off the top of the deck. 8 o'clock, take 8 cards. 12 o'clock, take 12 cards, AM or PM. Doesn't matter, I'm not going to look. We're good? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a clock. We need 12 hands for a clock, right? So here's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now I'm going to build a clock in order. This will be the one o'clock card. Then two, seven, eight, 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 eight. no, that's okay. So this is one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve o'clock. There's our clock. And what time of day did you pick? 11. 11. 11. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Is the 7 of spades? 7 of spades. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you the joke anyway, by the way. So these three older gentlemen go into a doctor's office to do a cognitive exam. So they come into the office, doctor brings them to the exam room, and says to the first gentleman, Start off simple. What's three times three? Guy says 156. She says, all right, I'm not starting off so good here. Ask the second gentleman. What's three times three? Guy says, Tuesday. All right, this is getting worse. So we asked the third gentleman. <laughs> Sir, for the love of God, what's three times three? And the guy says, nine. The doctor says, oh, thank God, some of you, one of you, there's a little something going on here. How'd you come up with that? He said, simple. I just subtracted 156 from Tuesday. <laughs> Usually that, that fails, which is why I, I got into insurance. So, um, so as Kim was, yes, today we're going to talk about our, our care solutions. Oh, thank you very much. Um, our care solutions product suite. And you're going to hear some things today that you haven't heard before in this industry, things that you can do, very cool things. Things like using qualified money to fund long-term care insurance. Things like using non-qualified annuities making them LTC tax-free, death benefit tax-free, and uh, using uh, the same thing with, with qualified annuities, not tax-free, but there's a place for that. Guaranteed premiums. How many of you have sold traditional long-term care insurance in the past? Okay, big problem with traditional LTC is premium increases, right? How about non-cancelable guaranteed premiums? How about being able to insure two people out of one person's IRA? Can't do that either. Some really cool stuff and really cool features with our products. But before I even get into how our products work, which are very neat, you know, you have to always keep in mind that you're solving for something. What you're solving for is for long-term care. 
and long-term care planning. So to go into a presentation and just present an illustration, no matter how well this fits your client, no matter how great this works with their money, their demographic, their situation, you still have to remember people are buying this to solve for a problem. A problem that most people are doing this, the Heisman, it's not gonna happen to me. So what I wanna spend the first 10, 15, 20 minutes on is giving you some data, some material, some ammunition, arrows in your quiver to help you have the conversation with your clients and build and create a need. Because if you just go in with a hypo, if you just go in with an illustration, you're gonna lose half the battles. You need to be able to understand and have the conversation with your clients why they're buying this to begin with. Does that make sense? All right, good. Um, and maybe this will start working. Okay, there we go. So I think we know there, there's obviously a problem, and, and it's an expensive problem at that. Average cost of care is about $87,000 a year. Anyway, you slice it. You have nursing home care, assisted living, home health care, $20 a day. This stuff's expensive. I don't think anybody can argue with that. And the bottom line is it's only going to get more expensive. It's not getting less expensive. Actual terms, between 4 and 6% inflation index on the cost of long-term care because you've got supply and demand. And it's only gonna get worse. And let's use a lowball average of inflation at three and a half percent on the cost of care. What's it gonna look like in 10 years? About 123,000 a year, what about in 20 years? 175,000 almost a year. An expensive problem to deal with. Let's just pause for a second though. Because you got four things that are gonna happen in the next 10 to 15 years that are gonna dramatically impact the rising cost of care and supply and demand. And number one are the baby boomers. How many baby boomers in the room? Looks like, like quite a few of you, right? We're always pointing the finger at you because we say you're always the center of, of what some of our, our the nation's problems are, right? 10,000 people a day are turning age 70. Baby boomers make up the biggest segment of our population, 80 million of you. Excuse me? 70. 10,000 people a day are turning age 70. This is our retiring community. You don't need to care now, but in 10 to 15 years, you will. It's creating an even larger dissonance between supply and demand. And the baby boomers is where the greatest center of our wealth is controlled. So in the next 10 to 15 years, our 70-year-old baby boomers are going to start going and needing care, creating a bigger issue with supply and demand. Oops, I'm going to do that. And then, of course, we have medical technology, which is fantastic because things that were killing us 30 years ago are today chronic conditions. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, a variety of cardiovascular disorders, easily diagnosed, very manageable with medications and procedures. The diagnostics are phenomenal. So we're living into our 80s and 90s. I don't know what the average lifespan is. 84? You know, it's funny, you would think it's in the 80s, but actuarial numbers are a little weird. They actually say it's 77. 79 for a female and 74 for a male. So ladies, think about that for a second. That's five years in your golden years. When you need someone, your spouse, your significant other the most, you'll be on your own. But we're not dying like we used to. We're living longer, thus dramatically increasing the chances we're going to need some kind of care. So you need to plan for it. That's the conversation, planning for care. And then of course you have the changing family dynamics. 30 years ago, if you needed long-term care, it was your family taking care of you. But it's not like that anymore. You might live here in Jacksonville, but your daughter's in New York and your son's in Chicago. Not to mention, so many households are dual income, so even if you have a daughter, 30 years ago she might have been a stay-at-home mom, but now she's working. Can't just break away from her kids, gymnastics and school and homework and, and their own jobs to come take care of you. Not to mention, would you want that? Do you want your family members taking care of you? And then of course you have the government. Hey, the government's great. You know, you have Medicare and Medicaid, the entitlement program is the only thing that's offered other than self-insuring or buying an LTC policy. Medicare isn't fantastic. It'll pay for a maximum of 100 days of care, but the average Medicare claim is only about 15 days because it only pays for skilled nursing. Medicaid, hey, Medicaid's phenomenal. Anyone have any idea what percentage of all long-term care is paid for by Medicaid? 40%, very close to 50%, which is why the government has done everything they can, partnership program, pension protection act, anything they can to create a favorable tax situation or asset uh, saving situation 
to privatize long-term care insurance. You know how the government gets you to do things? How they control things? Taxes. If they want you to do something, they create a favorable tax environment for you. And if they don't want you to do something, they create an unfavorable tax environment for you. So around long-term care, they'd be consistently doing things to get the burden off of their back. And Medicaid's phenomenal. When I first started with GE and I did my career training and became an LTC assassin, if you will, I, I used to have to sell this, oh, you don't want to be on Medicaid, you don't want to be in a Medicaid nursing home. It's crazy. The same nursing home that has a Medicaid patient has a self-insured patient and has an insured patient. Medicaid is phenomenal, but what's the problem with Medicaid? You gotta be broke. You gotta be broke to get it. And that's why the government is doing everything they can to privatize this and why your clients are talking to you about this. How many of you are financial planners, by the way? Okay. How many of you work with financial planners and or broker dealers? Okay. You're gonna love some of the things we're gonna talk about because your clients are definitely not gonna be Medicaid worthy. So that number, these numbers we talked about, this is for a year of care in 10 years or 20 years. But what's the average length of care? Well, for a man, about 2.2 years, woman 3.7. In Alzheimer's, people will live with Alzheimer's on average eight to 20 years. And these are just the averages. You know how I describe averages? If my feet are in a bucket of water and my head's on fire, on average, I'm comfortable. Doesn't really work. So what's comfortable for a man is a $383,000 LTC situation, a woman 645,000, someone with Alzheimer's, you're looking at possibly over 1.3 million. Fact of the matter is though, 70% of people are gonna need long-term care in some capacity and in some way. And over 40% are gonna spend some time in a nursing home. You know the biggest problem we have with long-term care is all of your clients think they're in the 30%. And by the way, nursing homes are filled with people that thought they were gonna be in the 30% because nobody thinks it's gonna happen to them. So how do you start the conversation? How do you get beyond this? It's really simple, you use two questions. Look, you might never need long-term care, but God forbid, if you did, have you considered the impact it's going to have on your family and your spouse and your children? Every good man I know, every good person I know doesn't want to burden their family. So when I was working with Genworth, we took a poll and we asked people that just bought their long-term care insurance policy, what was the number one reason you purchased your policy. What do you think came in as number one? That's exactly right. Protect the family. But you know something, before I probably got into this dialogue, you might have said asset protection. The number one reason people buy long-term care insurance is to protect the family. This is a family issue. Just think about this for a second. Regardless of what your scenario is, if you need long-term care, or if one of your clients need long-term care, they are always going to get it. Always. If you self insured and you have enough money, you'll pay for it yourself, you get it. If you buy a long term care policy in whatever capacity it is, that's going to pay for it, you're going to get it. If you have a little bit of money or no money, you'll go broke or just be broke, and Medicaid's going to pay for it, you're going to get it. The question is always at what impact to your family. Long term care insurance allows families to provide care better and longer by paying for the type of care and services family members don't want to do. This is family protection. And unlike a death in the family, which more often than not will pull families together, long-term care more often than not will pull families apart. This is what you're selling. These products are phenomenal. You're going to love them. You're going to adore them. You're going to find so many people that fit into so many windows here because it affects so many de different demographics. You're going to want out. You're going to want to go out and hit the street and talk product, but you need to talk about planning first and protecting the family, and it's a three-step process. Look, we're living longer. The chances you're gonna need care are so dramatically increased, we've gotta talk about putting a plan together. And God forbid when this happens, the impact on your family is so dramatic, we've gotta talk about putting a plan together. And then step three, real simple, nothing pays for this, except your own income, your own assets, that you've worked your entire life to allocate for retirement, pays for this. We have gotta talk about putting a plan in place. That's your conversation. Not the old days of statistics where you need to buy this because there's a 65% chance you're going to be in a nursing home and it's $100,000 a year and it's a 3.7 average and blah, 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 blah. 42.7% of all statistics are made up right on the spot. They mean nothing. 
You're selling this with a conversation. You're coming from a planning perspective. Once you've done that, once you've established that, just a couple questions. Look, you might not need care, but if you do, have you thought about what it does to your family? And have you thought about how you're going to pay for it? Let's get a plan in place to protect you. Simple conversation, and then you start introducing problems. Kim, you want to say something? Yeah, I always like to, at this point, kind of interject something here. And one of the challenges that I've seen in the insurance and financial planning industry as a whole has been, I think everybody believes in the protection aspect of it, you know, as advisors. You believe that your client should engage, should buy. The challenge for most insurance people they don't know how to engage the conversation, right? You do a really good job of analyzing and making presentations. And a lot of times you don't understand that. Um, here's the example. Think about something that you bought in the last six months, a year. I don't care what it is that you purchased. With the exception of food and possibly clothing, you subconsciously thought of three things. Did you need it or want it? Did you like or understand it? And third is could you afford it? Now, when it comes to long-term care insurance, whether or not it is traditional insurance or asset-based insurance, you have to establish the need. So that's where Keith is talking about the conversation. One of the tools that I've always helped advisors do, and please understand that when I say this, I'm not saying it from an arrogant perspective, but I personally have had over a thousand clients, nothing other than long-term care. Okay. That's, that's a, I'm a proud, that's a proud member. Now, why I was able to do that is because I understand the conversation. Clients are looking for you to engage with them. So the best way to always start a conversation is, what are the consequences? Now you may use the word impact, and you don't like the word consequence. I like the word consequence. So I'll ask the client, Mr. Jones, what are the consequences to your life if you need a care? What are the consequences to your grandkids if you need a care? Right? A lot of times I will address that conversation immediately to the man because it's the man who generally is the defensive one, so it's never going to happen. Right? Superman. Right? But it's the women who are the ones left holding the bag. You know, I may also say, what are the consequences to your assets? What are the consequences to your ability to maintain the standard of living? The word consequences is what I'm trying to get you to think about. If you remember nothing else about me personally, is always think about when you're talking to your client and you cannot really come to grips with how do you approach the subject. Think about consequences. Because what most of the agents and buyers will do, well, Mr. Jones, you know, I you know, you have this money here and we need to talk about long term care and and you know, as a result, you know, the cost of care is this, that, and the other, and you know, I represent this insurance company or that insurance company and you know, it'll do this, it'll do that. And by the way, it costs six thousand dollars. Right? And they wonder why they can't sell this. Right? So if you address the consequences, which is step one, step two is the easy part. This is the part where he's going to talk about. Right? The part where you get the client to understand how it works. What does every client want to do? Stay at home. Right? How many people want to go and drink? <laughs> right? So if you focus on that, and then the third component, and this is also what he's going to address, is how do you get them to pay for it and do it in a way that doesn't affect their lifestyle? Need, like, affordability. Every single buying decision in this country or you personally address that issue for the client. You know, something I also didn't bring up at the very beginning was, um, I don't know, for those of you who are already working with, with Kim's organization, LTC Solutions, <clears throat> I, I think most of you aren't, um, and I think Kim sent out an email to you with some documents in there, contracting paperwork. 
I, I work with 80 different agencies. And by the way, if you're not working within one of my agencies, I can't work with you. Um, How many 80. Specific. I'm the uh, regional vice president of regional marketing director, whatever the title they gave me, uh, with One America. I handle all of Florida and parts of the Northeast, but I work within defined accounts. And uh, Kim's agency that he works with, LTC Solutions, I can tell you, I've been working with them. Um, I've been with Gemma 13 years, now One America a month, uh, and I've been working with that organization for a very long time. And what I can tell you about them is they are extremely committed to the industry, they're committed to their agents, and they're committed to their agents' clients. So if, I don't know who you're working through for One America right now or any of the other carriers you're working with, but I can't um, endorse enough with that organization. And if you're not working within one of the organizations that I service, we can't work together. And I am very hands-on, I work not just with my agencies, but I work hand-in-hand -hand with agents. And you get concierge level service from me. So if you want to work with me and I can help you with your clients, I mean, and that's what they do as well. You know, and I'll talk about as well about recognizing opportunity today. Um, but if you can, I don't know what your current situation is, get your contacting through L contracting through LTC Solutions. They really understand the industry. They really understand our products and all asset-based products, whether it's us, Nationwide, PackLife, Lincoln, it doesn't matter. They're going to provide the best solution for you. So I can't give enough of a ringing endorsement for what it is Kim does, George Mellendorf, the owner of the agency. I'd love to work with you guys. It's only possible if you are within one of my agencies. And I can't recommend enough the one that Kim is working with. So how many of you are now or have in the past worked with asset-based type solutions? The Money Garage Pack, like, okay, a few of you. And how many of you, we talked about doing traditional, just a couple here and there? Okay. So a few of you are, are, haven't done either, so this will be a little eye-opening for you. The idea of asset-based solutions in contrast to traditional long-term care insurance is in looking at an entire portfolio, you know, people are invested in all different areas. What you're really going to do is re-intention or repurpose a portion of someone's or a couple's portfolio in an asset-based approach to protect the entire thing. You're going to take a portion of their money, generally, it's an underperforming part of their portfolio that you're going to take, you're going to get phenomenal leverage on, get a death benefit out of, a great long-term care benefit, double, triple, possibly even a lifetime benefit, a death benefit, and the money is liquid. What I like to say is when you're looking at asset-based solutions, the majority of them, not ours, is you're not buying anything. You're taking money from your left pocket, repositioning it to your right pocket, getting tremendous leverage on its dollar for death benefit, phenomenal leverage for LTC benefits, and your money is, in nearly all cases, depending on which products you go with, is liquid, you can get it back. This is the concept of asset-based solutions, and we're gonna talk about them. But what it is, is you're using, you're, you're doing portfolio protection. And we said we had a couple of financial planners in here. You're not only tech protecting your client's portfolio, you're protecting your portfolio. Because as your clients start pulling out six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars a month to pay for home care, assisted living facilities, and nursing home care, that's money coming out of your assets under management. You're protecting your portfolio, and for those that are working with financial planners, you're protecting their portfolios. So let's talk about our product suite. Now, before I go into this, that's a lot of products. That's, I mean, that's ten products, right? Yes. Of the presentation? Yeah. Absolutely. You absolutely can. Um, but you're going to understand these. You're, as we go through this, I'm not going to get very granular with this, but I'm going to get you to a point where you're going to un you'll understand these products. But then you'll go into your car, turn on the radio, make a couple calls, and wait a minute. Which one was which? What did he say? They were so good. You know what? I don't even, I don't, I'm not concerned about you remembering how these products work. What I want you guys to realize today and recognize is the opportunity. You're gonna look at this and as I'm explaining these to you, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I know exactly who fits into that bucket. Because it's a little bit of something for everyone between qualified funds and non-qualified funds and couples and people who are, and so on and so forth. So what I want you to do right now, everyone has a pad of paper in front of them, right? If you don't, let me know. What I want you to do is write this down. Asset here one, put a line under it, and then five spaces underneath that write asset care three, and then five spaces underneath that, write annuity care two. And then five under that, write index care. 
Because what we're going to do, what I'm going to ask you to do today, and you're really going to want to do this exercise, because I positively, 100% guarantee that as I'm going through this, you are going to find people that, oh my God, this is perfect for. Because you're going to see things you have not seen in the industry yet. Don't worry about understanding how to explain this. You'll get the concept and basis, but what I want you to recognize is, you're going to, as we're going through the products, is write the names of your clients that fit into those products. And then the idea is, you're going to work with Kim at LTC Solutions, get your contracting in, and be able to work with him and say, you know, I had three clients for Asset Care when I knew it sounded good at the time. Can you re-explain it to me? And they'll get you out an illustration. They'll work with you and help you place your clients where they belong. But you're going to love these products. So, and furthermore, yes, it looks like we have 10 products there. But you know what? We really just have two. We have our Asset Care product line, which is Whole Life linked to LTC. Yes, there's four products, but it's really just four different funding methods. It's the same product, just funded four different ways. And the annuity care products, pretty much the same thing. A little bit of difference with that, but you'll see what you'll love is this right here, this diagram, you're gonna see across every product we have. Once you understand this, you're gonna really understand everything and then it's all just little nuances. So what actually is this? Okay, and I'll start by using Asset Care One. I'll go through the example, explain what all that means and you'll see how that translates to all the solutions that we have. So Asset Care One is our first product. And this is a single premium whole life policy with a guaranteed interest rate that you'll dump in as a single premium. And in this example, and this is, let me talk about some of the interesting things, the standouts. Number one, what does it say up there? This is a joint contract. This is two 64 year olds. We have a patent on this. The only company that you can dump in a single premium, and this is a joint second to die policy. This is gonna cover two people. So a husband and wife, oh and by the way, this is not just for husband and wife. If there's an insurable interest there, you could be business partners, you could be mother and son, you could be living together in the same household, same sex or non-safe sex. You don't have to live in the same household if you're uh, you know, uh, family members, because business partners don't, business partners have insurable interest. And that will work with this. This is a joint policy second to die. So this is a single premium of 125,000 funding this life policy, throwing off a death benefit of 250,000. Now one of the things I want you to remember, and this is gonna hold true through all of the products, everything over here on the left side, we call this the base contract or the core product. Everything on the left side has cash value death benefit and if there's a return of premium this is what you're getting over on the right side this is your long-term care insurance this has no value other than to pay out LTC benefits in some cases tax-free in some cases taxable we'll talk about that but if there's a return of premium death benefit whatever none of this is like that and I don't I don't like to call these combination products when I think of combo products I think of those uh, uh, living benefits chronic illness riders these are full featured LTC policies, complete with international coverage, care coordination, equipment home modification, all the full throttle features you find in a robust LTC product. This is not a combo product. This is truly a linked product. This is a whole life policy here, linked to a separate LTC policy, all wrapped up, cellophane packaged nicely for you on one application. It's beautiful. So here is, in this example, we're dumping in $125,000. It is a death benefit that's covering two people on a second to die. Now, if you need to use this for long-term care, the first pool of money made available to you is that $250,000. Your death benefit will go away if needed for long-term care. And in this example, we're choosing to disseminate that out to you over a 50-month period, which simply means, and you have options, you can choose 25, 33, or 50 months to have that paid out. In this example, we chose 50 months. So we're dividing that death benefit of 250,000 by 50 months, and we're coming up with that number 5,000. What's that? That's your monthly maximum per person. So what we're saying is if you die, you get 250,000 after both have passed away because it is second to die. But if you need this for long-term care, you have a quarter million dollars and you each can take out a maximum of 5,000 per month for a total of 10,000 per month. Once that 250,000 is gone, 
don't worry about 50 months. It's just a quarter million after your disposal. You just can't pull out more than 5,000 a month each. Not bad for LTC. But this is what I call insuring for the garage being on fire. Most people are buying this because they're worried about the house being on fire. And they're getting this for the continuation of benefits. So what you can do is when you design your policy, get this rider, which you have a choice of either getting another extension, another 50 months, another 250,000, or how many people have seen the word lifetime associated to a traditional long-term care insurance policy in the last five years? You just don't see it anymore. So that's the second area we're different. Number one, this is a joint policy, second to die, one single premium, insuring two lives. Secondly, you can get this doubled, 50 months, 50 months again, or buy a lifetime policy. Now the way you buy that lifetime policy is you can fund it with another single premium, or you can do an annual pay like you would for traditional long-term care insurance. You can even do 10 pay or 20 pay, what have you. Now this premium payment here is something you never hear in long-term care insurance. That's not guaranteed renewable, that's non-cancelable. How many of you have sold long-term care insurance in the past? How many of you have seen rate increases on every carrier out there pretty much? That's what guaranteed renewable is. Non-cancelable is, we're not saying our premiums have never gone up, we're saying they can't ever go up. And actually we have a marketing campaign where we're launching, we're actually in the middle of it right now where we're saying, uh, guarantees and traditional LTC actually do go together. So we got some interesting things going on here. Number one, you got a joint policy giving a death benefit for two people, a, an accessible lifetime benefit for you, if you want, giving you over a billion dollars or whatever it is because it never runs out, and an annual premium that simply can't go up. And if you want, you can take this 125,000, just dump 100 in here, and use the 25,000 to fund your continuation of benefits. Now this works for people who are age 40 to 80, but this works joint equal age. So if you have someone who's possibly 85, but marrying someone who's maybe 70, they'll get a joint equal age and they'll become insurable, which is very nice. And in some situations where you have someone who's maybe on the borderline, a gray area from underwriting, because it is a joint second to die, the healthier spouse could possibly carry them through underwriting and get them approved, depending upon, of course, the situation. Um, any questions about this? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yes. So it will be 3% of, the, no, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be 3% of the death benefit paid out over 33 months, whatever that number is, at the time of illustration, that's what your monthly maximum is going to be. And then uh, once, and that's, that stays the same because it's a guaranteed interest rate. And that once that's used up, if you use it for LTC, you'll get that number again for another 33 months or a lifetime, whichever you choose. It's fixed, it doesn't go down. Unless you choose inflation options, cost of living adjustments, it can actually go up. You can get an inflation adjustment on the base. In Florida, unfortunately, you can't, but in other states you can. So this 5,000 a month, you can get 2%, 3% compound inflation on the base, and you can get it on this either or. In Florida, it's not available on the base, and you know something, I don't recommend it anyway. I personally like to go, instead of 50 months, I like to go, on most cases, depending upon the age, if you're dealing with someone older, maybe not, but I like to go for your couples in your 50s and 60s, 25 months, because it's 4% of the death benefit, it's gonna give you, not double, you know, it's not gonna go from 5,000 to 10,000, but it could go up to like 6,500, a nice number for the monthly maximum, and then I would throw inflation protection on this number over here. So in, you know, 15, 20 years, the 6,500 would be, you know, who knows, 10, 12,000. So you'll be on a claim for the first couple of years using that first pool, that 250,000, it's always gonna stay, it would be 6,500. Once that go that's gone, that money's gone, boom, you, you come over to a benefit paying out 12,000 a month. Yes, they do, they have to do. If you choose a 25 month payout on the base, it has to be a 25 month payout or lifetime on the rider. It does have to match, great question.
Um, <clears throat> on uh, life insurance, um, you know, you, you're usually working with people in their late 60s, early 70s that mm -hmm. have money to, to do something. Can you talk a little bit about the underwriting and, you know, is it yeah. like typical rated? Yeah, we have, so the underwriting is you're gonna do, um, you're gonna go through, obviously, the application, and then we're gonna pull a prescription drug report, we're gonna check with the Medical Information Bureau, and we're gonna do a telephone interview. Now, and that's it. Unless we get some blips, we see some things we don't like, in which case we could ask for APS or paramed. But our typical is we're gonna do just those things, everything comes up clean, it's good to go. And then, and then what changes if it's not if it's not a, a annual pay, it's just a single pay? Is it how much benefits they'll? they'll well, it depends. Yes. Yeah. So if you choose um, to go on for the continuation of benefits rider, if you choose an annual pay, um, you know it'll it'll tell you what it will be if you want to go annual pay, or it'll tell you what it will be if it's single pay. So it may be fewer months or. Yeah. Or yeah. Months. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that a question or are you stretching? Okay, so that's Asset Care 1, pretty simple. Now let's talk about Asset Care 3. Why am I skipping 2? Well, Asset Care 3 and Asset Care 2 are literally identical. Same exact design. The only difference is Asset Care 3 is, Asset Care 3 is used for qualified money, and Asset Care 2, which you're literally never going to sell, is used for non-qualified money. Why? Because we have a much better place for that non-qualified money in our annuity products. In some situations, you might do it not very often, but we're talking about the same product, two and three, just the difference is qualified or non-qualified. So let's look at Asset Care 3. Does this look familiar, right? Here's your base policy. Here's your rider with continuation. This is your death benefit. This is what has cash value over here. This is your long-term care insurance, no value other than to pay for long-term care insurance. Nothing changes. Same as Asset Care 1. The difference is how we're going to fund this. So Asset Care 1 was funded with a single premium. Asset Care 3 is going to come from qualified money. So let's just use an example of a husband that has money in, doesn't matter, 401k, 403b, IRA, doesn't matter where it is. We're going to take $125,000 out of his 401k and we're going to dump it into an annuity. This is just a very vanilla annuity thing, point squat. On, on the interest rates. None of the annuities or anything we do are for about gains. It's all about getting proper LCC coverage and funding methods. So it's a single deferred annuity with, a, I think, a 3% interest rate. Or it, does, it doesn't even matter. But what you're getting here, you're dumping your money into this annuity. What's the point of that annuity? Is every year we're going to take a withdrawal from that annuity, and it's going to come from the top of the hourglass into the bottom of the hourglass. And what's that doing? That's funding a life insurance policy. Now, what's the, what's the importance of this is, number one, this life insurance policy is going to be very similar to the one that we just saw a moment ago. It's going to have a death benefit. It's going to be able to be used for LTC benefits. And this is what's great about this. This can be a single or a joint life policy, something you can never do before. You were never able to take out of an individual's 401k and buy a life insurance policy on two people. Well, now you can and let me show you how this works. So, you took 125,000 out of his 401k, it's going into this annuity. So everything on the top of this hourglass is the annuity, which means it's taxable. Everything on the bottom of the hourglass is the life insurance, also LTC insurance, non-taxable. And the way we do this is we take a, a withdrawal of 6.5% every year that drips down from the top to the bottom. So in this case, it's 125,000, 6.5% of that is 8,000. That money is taxable. because This is coming over from qualified money. You're gonna get a 1099 and pay tax on that every year. But you know what? That's a lot better than paying a tax on 125,000 straight out. People don't mind this. So that is gonna be taxable. But guess what? What is that gonna satisfy? A portion of, if not all of, but at least a portion of every year. That's exactly right. That will satisfy a portion of the required minimum distributions, if not all of it, depending upon the rate and depending upon where they fall into. So, we took 125,000, dumped it into this annuity. It's gonna funnel down one payment every year into this life policy. And in year one, that 8,000 comes down into here and boom, automatically gives you a death benefit of 133,000. 
Well, we took that 8,000 out of the top annuity, so that 125 is now 117,000. So year one, we took 8,000 out, that's gonna decrease, and this goes up to 133. It's always gonna be a death benefit of 250,000. It's always gonna be that first pool of money for long-term care is always gonna be 250, right? Here's 133 and 117, because that went down by 8,000. Next year, that's gonna go down 8,000 again. 117 will be 109, and this is gonna go up 8,000. Until ultimately, over 20 years, all 250,000 will be over here and completely tax-free. Because in this year, year one, if miraculously they both died, this death benefit would pay out 133,000, the annuity would pay out 117, but that would be taxable. Similarly, if they needed this for long-term care, the 133,000 would be non-taxable paid out for LTC, but they'd have to tap into the 117, and that would be taxable. Everything up top in the annuity is always taxable, this distribution gets a 1099, is taxable as well, but down here it becomes tax-free. So after 20 years, you have a $250,000 death benefit that's tax-free, LTC benefits tax-free, and this is where it gets priceless. Where you'll, and, and again, it's the same thing. How do you want to pay it out? 25 months, 33 months, 50 months. Here we chose 50 months, which means you can get 50 months again, another 250 tax-free, or a billion dollars tax-free because it's coming from here. And once again, joint life. You're now insuring two people on just an individual's 401k, IRA, 403b, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. Now this over here would also have an annual premium, uh, or you can do that with a single pay, 10 pay, 20 pay, you choose. Very exciting stuff. Yes, sir? Is there, is there any way to get the distribution from the annuity Always, always going to be taxable. Money, government's got to get their money. It's coming from qualified money. Until it gets into that life policy and comes down, it is, it is going to be taxable. I, I just want to interject something here real quick because uh, how many of you in here have a 215 license? Okay, which tells me what? You got variable license, right? How many of you doing 401k uh, uh, rollers? What's coming down the pipe? DLL ruling. Really. Fiduciary rule, right? Indexed annuities are going to be impacted, and variable annuities and mutual funds. Seriously, I mean, this is not. Good. Just think about the impact to your livelihoods, that in itself, right? And he's going to talk more, I think, a little bit more about the concept, but this really captured my attention. When that DOL ruling snuck up on us, you know, for, for those of you that haven't been reading about it, me, right? Because this is serious stuff. Yes. In the end, you probably know that it's proven that both lives are, are insurable. Yes, they're, they're, they'll have to be insurable. Exactly. They'll have to go through uh, a telephone interview. Um, the prescription drug report will be run, a medical information bureau report will be run, and if we see something that might be a little iffy that we don't like, we could go after medical records. Um, this obvious. No, you're going to use ours. I mean, you honestly could do this yourself and get your own SPIA and, you know, then drop it into something like this. But this is nice, cellophane wrapped, packaged, easy. So it's, it's really a two product sale, all done once and easy. And, and the distribution happens every year. You get your own SPIA, you're going to have to do the distribution yourself and go through that paperwork every year. This is one and done. So. The commissions are paid right now on the annuity. I think they're looking at, at eventually going to pay it on the life insurance. But right now, I believe it's paid on the annuity. Great question. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you always have to have two lives, or can you no. do it with one? No. Can be single or joint, either or. This works. You've got one spouse that has a lot of health problems, and the yeah, other can be single. Be All of the products are single or joint. And I, did I tell you that, that joint what it includes? Right. It, uh, it doesn't just have to be spouses. For our asset care products, which we're talking about right now, it could be mother son, it could be business partners living together. I covered that, right? Yeah, woke up early and <laughs> keep me on track, guys. Um, this is obviously age 59 and a half to 80. Why? This is qualified money. Why take the penalties? I believe you actually can, you know, at younger ages, but why would you? 
does it make sense to take the penalty? So, but your, your target market, and this is age 59 and a half, up to age 80. So start thinking about your clients that have a lot of money, and a lot of people do, have a good portion of their money in qualified funds tied up. This is a great place for them to get value out of it, ensure two lives, get LTC benefits that will never run out, guaranteed premiums. All right, so that's Asset Cure 3, which in essence is Asset Cure 2. But Asset Cure 2, you just do it with non-qualified money, which doesn't really make sense. The only reason why you would do that, you know, because you have to go annuity to annuity, so that's what you would do here, but we have a better option for that with our annuity products to use for non-qualified money where it's all tax-free, why pay tax on it. Was that a question or a stretch? Mm -hmm. That has a... <clears throat> Yeah, so he has a life policy that's funded with non-qualified dollars? Yes. Okay. And is it a joint life? Single life. It's a, it's a single life. Um, but I believe with annuity it has to be like to like. But with our life products it doesn't have to be like to like. Yeah, you have a product that I talked for. I'm going to show you that right now. Yeah. I, I believe that's, that's, I believe that you can do that. With the annuity products, it has to be like to like. Um, but with our asset, and I, you know, I apologize. I'm with the company a month, and it takes a month before you understand these things. But I'm almost, I'm almost sure with the like products, you can go single to joint, just with the annuities you can. Okay, so that is asset care three, which in essence is asset care two. But asset care three works with qualified money. Asset care two works with non-qualified money. Now let's talk about asset care four. Again, it's just all the same stuff, guys. Asset care one, single premium. Asset Cure 3 and 2, same basis as you're coming from IRAs and qualified money. Asset Cure 4, look familiar, right? Here's your base contract. You, you know, you get 25, 30, 3, 50 months, whichever one you want. If you want to get the rider on it, the same thing or lifetime. Asset Cure 4 is the same thing as Asset Cure 1. You know the difference? It's not a single premium. It's an annual premium on the base contract. So in this example, we're showing you, it doesn't show you age, but it doesn't matter. They're going to pay $1,000 a year as their annual premium. And this is really where the rubber hits the road comparing against traditional long-term care insurance. So what you're gonna find out, by the way, is we're probably a little more expensive on average than your traditional LTC policies, but not really, because when you, when you talk about the fact that we have a lifetime benefit, which nobody has, zero LTC carriers offer that, if you try pricing that out, they'd be who knows what percentage more expensive. So how does this work? Well, this is once again, very interesting, a joint uh, life second to die contract, right? This one premium is gonna fund both people, $1,000 a year for the premium is gonna throw off a death benefit. First thing, how it's very different from traditional LTC, because we know with traditional LTC, you use it or you lose it. With us, we have what we call live, quit, or die, and that's on all our products. That's what's gonna happen. You're either gonna live, quit, or die. You're gonna die and get a death benefit. You're gonna quit, you're gonna take your money back because on the left side, remember, this is your cash value, this is your return of premium, this is your death benefit, and your first pool for LTC. So you're gonna die and get a death benefit, you're gonna quit to get your money back, or you're gonna live and use it for long-term care. You can't say that with traditional LTC. So here's a $1,000 a year annual premium, it's gonna buy a death benefit of 100,000, it's gonna throw off a monthly mo maximum of 4,000 per person, and then, of course, you can get the rider with the continuation of benefits, right? The rider, the 25 months, always has to match the base or lifetime you choose. And that rider is going to have its own premium as well. And in this example, for a lifetime benefit, a lifetime benefit for a couple, $2,100 a year. So you combine them both and do a full premium. $2,100 plus $1,000, $3,100 a year is getting you death benefit, liquidity, and a billion dollars of long-term care. Oh, on both lives. On both lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, the part that I love, which you can't say about traditional long-term care insurance, these premiums can never go up. So even if you are, we could be 40% more expensive than the competition, which in, in maybe a, a, a single person, it might be a little more expensive, could be that much, but guess what? 30 years down the road, they're paying the same premium with a lifetime benefit. Nobody can say that. Oh, and you get your money back. Oh, and there's a death benefit. 
If you're showing traditional long-term care insurance, you have to show this next to them. Because let me tell you something right now, everyone is talking about these products right now, because you can do things with them you can't do anywhere else. This is an alternative to traditional LTC with more robust features, better guarantees,